Please remain standing for the national anthem by Austin Yoders and Gail Morris. Gentlemen are invited to remove their caps and military veterans are encouraged to render a salute during the playing of the anthem. Please be seated. Thank you, Austin and Gail, for that outstanding rendition of the National Anthem. Austin is one of our talented students in the Quilling class of 2022. I am Dr. Bill Block, Vice President for Clinical Affairs and Dean of the Quilling College of Medicine. I'm also a Quillen graduate, class of 1992. I want to welcome you, the family and friends, of the class of 2022. Thank you for joining us for this long anticipated day. At this time, I would like to introduce the stage party for today. Please stand as you are introduced. Dr. Brian Nolan, president of East Tennessee State University. <laughs> Dr. Kimberly McCorkle, provost and senior vice president for academics, East Tennessee State. Dr. Beth Fox, Vice Dean of Academic Affairs. Dr. Deidre Pierce, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Dr. Blair Reese, Assistant Professor and Junior Clerkship Director, Department of Internal Medicine. Dr. Brian Helsel. Clinical Assistant Professor in the Department of Surgery. Dr. Jason Moore, Professor and Medical Education Director, Department of Family Medicine. Dr. Reed Blackwelder, Associate Dean of Graduate Medical Education and Continuing Education for Health Professionals. And Ms. Gina Botsko, President, Class of 2022. I would also like to recognize our special guest, Mr. Dean Bosis, Medical Center Director of the James H. Quillen VA Medical Center. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Graduates, it is truly an honor to address you and to have the opportunity to share a few thoughts. First, congratulations. You've reached a milestone in your education that very few can achieve. You've worked long hours, studied intently, and sacrificed much. It is an honor for the faculty and staff to call you doctor. My second point is to remind you to find the time to let these events sink in. Either today or this weekend, turn off your cell phone and computer and take in all that surrounds you. Think of your classmates, your family, and your friends. Let these memories work their way deep into your mind. This is a time you don't want to forget. And finally, take the time in the next week to write a note to someone who has made this day possible. It can be your parents, a partner, a friend, a classmate, or a professor. 
just put down a few words to express gratitude it will mean more to that person than you could ever imagine graduates congratulations at this time i'd like to invite dr brian nolan to the podium to share his remarks with the class dr nolan Dr. Black, thank you and good afternoon. On behalf of the East Tennessee State University Board of Trustees, our faculty, staff, and students, I bring greetings and congratulations to you, the members of the 2022 graduating class of the Quillen College of Medicine. I'm pleased to welcome our graduates, their family and friends to the Martin Center for the Arts as we celebrate this milestone day in your educational journey. To the members of the class of 2022, today you officially earned the title doctor. I would imagine that for most of you, this is a day that you've dreamed of for the majority of your life. From a young child until this day, you have dreamed of the opportunity to make a difference, to serve, to lead, and to continue forward the mission of this institution, which is to improve the quality of life for the people of our region. When we have dreams, we take purposeful steps to achieve those dreams. And for you, those dreams set forth an ambitious journey it was a journey that required tremendous commitment. It was a journey that was not easy, but it was a journey towards a career that hold both promise and reward. You see, few careers have the opportunity to have the transformative impact on the lives of others that you will have as a physician. As Helen Keller once said, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. And as former First Lady Rosalind Carter noted, there are four types of people in the world, those who have been caregivers, those who are caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need a caregiver. As physicians, you'll bring healing, you'll bring comfort, you'll be a source of hope, hope for a better tomorrow. And as your life cycles, you'll play all four of the roles described by Rosalind Carter. Irrespective of your place in the life cycle, please provide and absorb care with passion and humility. Take the values of this institution with you throughout your career, values that declare that people come first and are treated with dignity and respect. As med students at our university, you've begun this journey. You've already been a source of hope and encouragement. You've already touched the lives of patients and they will not forget you. You've offered comfort at their most vulnerable moments and you've provided a voice when they needed assurances more than ever. Today, as you take your oath and leave this stage, please know that we're proud of you and we're excited about the destinations that are ahead for you. Dr. Block asked you to write a note of thanks to an individual who shaped your journey. But I would also encourage you to remember that Sunday is Mother's Day. There's nothing more pure than the love of a mother. You are here today because of sacrifices that your mom or a caregiver made for you. So take time in the days to come to pass that love forward and for those of you who are going to pursue a career in which you have the opportunity to bring life in the world, know that at that moment, lives are transformed and you're a part of that transformation. What a joy, what a gift, what an opportunity, an opportunity made possible by this institution. Best wishes to you as we embark upon this journey. Godspeed to each of you and go box. Thank you, Dr. Nolan. At this time, I would like to recognize the senior class officers, co-vice presidents, Anderson Estes and Heather Grubbs, treasurer, Angela Haxel Newmark, and the president of the class of 2022, Ms. Gina Botsko, who has served as the class president each of her four years. Ms. Botsko is from Hendersonville, Tennessee. She completed her undergraduate education at High Point University where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Biology. Gina matched in obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Tennessee in Nashville. She is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and served on multiple medical school education committees. Gina, thank you for your leadership and for your service to your fellow students, to Quillen and to our community. Ms. Botsko, the podium is yours.
Thank you for that kind introduction. First and foremost, I want to take a moment to thank all of the faculty, staff, mentors, and clinicians that have guided us up until this point. Additionally, I want to thank all the family members, friends, and significant others who are here today to celebrate us. To the loved ones who cannot be here today, whether due to travel or because they are no longer with us, I want to say that we would not be walking across this stage if it was not for all of these influences encouraging us and pushing us forward, so thank you. Well, guys, we did it. Today we become physicians. This is a milestone that we will cherish for the rest of our lives. Today, let's celebrate all of our hard work, but also acknowledge that the work is still yet to come. We are about to face responsibilities we have yet to encounter, and while we're very excited for the challenges that come with residency, I hope that every day we remind ourselves why we chose this profession. I believe that the biggest impact that we can make on our patients does not actually require the medical degree that we're about to have today. I believe that the biggest impact that we can make are in little moments. It's reorienting a patient after they wake up from surgery and they're confused. It's holding a patient's hand when they are tearful and scared after hearing a new diagnosis. It's hugging a family who is saying goodbye to a loved one. We don't need to be doctors to do these things, but we have the honor of being in these situations because we are doctors. So to each of my classmates, I'm gonna ask you to do two things. First, please make an impact on every single patient that you encounter beyond appropriately treating their condition through these little moments. Second, please show up every day ready to advocate for the entirety of their care and truly make a difference. Sometimes this advocacy may not happen in the clinic, the hospital, or even in direct communication with your patient. Sometimes the most important form of advocacy is behind closed doors. The reality is now that we are doctors, our voices carry power. While it's imperative that we are cautious with this power, it's an amazing opportunity to invoke change in a world that desperately needs it right now. From our current healthcare system that contains a myriad of barriers limiting access to care, to the implications of misinformation spreading on the internet that we specifically saw during COVID in regards to life-saving vaccinations, to the catastrophic humanitarian crisis occurring in Ukraine, to the heartbreaking reality that the women here today may have less rights than our mothers, and especially now with Roe versus Wade is overturned. There is so much room for public education, legislative change, and advocacy. My hope is that our generation, our class more specifically, will have the hard conversations with patients with our families, to spread science-based evidence and better our communities. Because if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? I know this seems like a tall order. We will not have a lot of free time, that's for sure. But if you have the opportunity once in a while to educate a student that comes after us, make an extra phone call to legislation, go to a rally or protest that you believe in, or post science-based evidence on your social media account to spread awareness. If we all do small things on an occasion, collectively these small things will add up. Today, we are off to a great start. Our class is donating a little over $800 to a local nonprofit here in Johnson City called A Step Ahead. They work to provide free birth control and transportation to anyone seeking a long-acting reversible contraceptive. I am so proud of our class for selecting this charity, and I believe that this is only the very beginning of our efforts that will improve the lives of our patients. If we each focus on the two things that I mentioned above, specifically being present and emotionally connecting with our patients, as well as advocating for them, I can only imagine the impact that our class will have. We will be good doctors and better team members for those who look up to us. 
Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve as your class president. It has been an honor and a privilege to learn by your side over the last four years, and I look forward to seeing all that we do in the coming years. It is a pleasure to next introduce Dr. Reed Blackwelder. Dr. Blackwelder is the Associate Dean for Graduate Medical Education and Continuing Education for Health Professionals and Professor of Family Medicine at the Quillen College of Medicine. In his career, he has been a small town family physician, a residency program director, and chair of the ETSU Department of Family Medicine. He still sees patients and precepts residents and students, including interprofessional learners in all three of the ETSU Family Medicine Residency Programs. He is a past president of the American Academy of Family Physicians. During his six years on the board of directors and as an officer, he advocated on behalf of family physicians and patients nationwide to inspire positive change in the U.S. healthcare system, specifically to implement effective team-based patient-centered care. He graduated from Emory Medical School, cum laude, and was elected to Alpha Omega Alpha Medical Honor Society. He did his residency and a teaching fellowship at the Medical College of Georgia. He is a member of the Gold Humanism and Medicine Honor Society. He has received numerous teaching awards at Quillen College of Medicine and has been recognized with the John Derryberry Distinguished Service Award and as the Family Physician of the Year from the Tennessee Academy of Family Physicians. The American Academy of Family Physicians selected him as the AAFP ex Exemplary Teacher of the Year in 2008. Dr. Blackwelder. Okay, that's too long. Uh, hi, I'm Reed. Uh, so I'm, I'm honored to be here and I'm thrilled to get to talk to you one last time as a group and a family. You've heard it, but please pay attention to the need to celebrate today. It marks an end and a beginning. You'll never gather like this again. You may have intentions, but it won't happen. So embrace it, even though you're not going to remember all of this. Some of you know I start meetings and social media posts with thoughts of the day. The first one I want to share is the purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help others. Albert Schweitzer is a theologian, musician, humanitarian, philosopher, and physician. The theme for me over the years and today will be the power of words. So consider some of them as you listen. The first word is growth. You're where you want it to be. So congratulations. I recognize you created this reality. That means you did this to yourself. <laughs> okay, so be careful what you wish for, because you've already made another wish and it's gonna come true. The next path is full of anxiety and uncertainty and excitement and thrill. I've told you in the past, things don't necessarily get better, they get different, so they're gonna get different, but they'll get better. You'll get a salary, that's good. <laughs> but along with that comes responsibility. You're about to enter a really odd place. You're a physician and therefore responsible. But you're also a learner and you're protected. And that's a really difficult balance. But thank goodness for the protection. You're going to be thankful for that for a while. And disagreements will happen. Basically, if you have three physicians on a case, you'll have at least nine opinions. <laughs> and it starts as a medical student, but it grows as a resident. Do understand that your mistakes are going to teach you perhaps more than your successes. You're going to make mistakes. Patients are going to suffer. Patients will die. But patients also do get well and get better. You will sometimes cure, but you can always heal. Regardless, learn. You either win or you learn. Keep that in mind. In other words, excuse me, word is service. You're answering the call to a service profession. 
you're committing to the service of others and you don't truly know what that means but you're about to learn very soon you're going to take an oath take this very seriously oaths are rare nowadays but they carry ancient power your commitment to the oath you're about to swear will be frequently challenged easy to judge others it's easy to fall into habits of, of humor which is often at other people's and sometimes patients expense so I'm going to ask you to fight to maintain your compassion every day every moment each decision each word each action is moving you on a path you can always redirect yourself what we do is sacred it's another powerful word that I don't use lightly respect Respect yourself, respect your family, your team, your process, and most important, your patients. Respect the fact that everyone is on their own difficult journey, including you. Residency is another journey. Perhaps you should consider integra excuse me, integration instead of balance. Balance gives you this feeling it's supposed to be like this. It's never like that. How do you integrate this and move yourself forward and be respected? You've heard teams mentioned several times. We trained you unlike most people in this country. You're gonna to go to programs where the faculty and residents don't have that same training. We challenged you a few years ago to be change agents, especially in interprofessional education and care. The white cord you wear is a powerful symbol of our recognition that you're never alone. Every day, identify your team. Check in with your team. Be good with the ebb and flow of leadership. Sometimes it's you, other times it should be somebody else. One thing that's uh, very true for family physicians, but is true for all of us, medicine is about relationships and stories. So make relationships, nurture them. You know how to connect. You've done it all your career, keep doing it. But recognize every patient is yours, not someone else's. Please own that responsibility. Find a way, despite time pressures, despite whatever's happening to you, to let your patient tell their story and listen. And remember communication. And I'll tell you right now, this is so hard. One, I'm glad to get to see you because sometimes you're behind. But you know what I really want to do right now? Just walk up and down the aisle and ask you about EKGs or communication. And they don't know, but y'all know you're saying, Izzy, can he stay behind the lectern? So far, I'm doing pretty good. It is not easy, but I'm going to ask you to remember the structure of communication. Remember to introduce yourself. And guess what? Really soon, you finally honestly do get to say, I'm Dr. So-and-so. And now's the time you're going to not want to because you're like, oh, God, they're going to find out I shouldn't be here. But you can actually say it. Remember, what brings you in? And listen. Tell me about that. And listen. Tell me more. And listen. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Let me tell you what I've heard. There's a lot of telling going on there, but let them tell you first. It's all about stories. And recognize and respond to emotion. Every encounter with you in some way, shape, or form truly is life or death to your patient. You may not see it or feel it, but to them, there's something about it that's really critical. All the logic you have that you now want to impart has to wait until you get through the emotion. And respect is worth repeating. It's essential at every level. Respect your staff, at your program, your clinic, in your hospital. Know their name. Make the effort to find out. Remember the impact it had when that very first day, I knew your names and we hadn't met yet. I know it freaked a lot of you out. It's not that difficult. It's a magic trick, you two can do it. Know your staff, know your people. Know their story. Check in with those people regularly and sincerely. So the very next step to become a physician happens soon. You're going to listen for your name. You're going to stand up. You're going to walk across the stage. You're going to be hooded. Your mind's going to go totally blank. You're going to shake President Olin's hand. And somebody's going to call you doctor for the first time. But the way to become a healer is to care for and about your patients. Remember what Quaz and many others here have repeatedly told you. 
If you care for patients, you don't treat diagnosed needs. They come ready to trust you, but they're often afraid. So honor that trust and be thankful for it. Little things are not little ever. Cultivate and practitude, practice gratitude, even after and maybe especially after a bad day. It's okay to vent, but somewhere along the line, stop, share the difference you made in someone's life because it happens every day. What a blessing. What a sacred responsibility. And what an opportunity. I often close the day with the PMTOT, the afternoon thought of the day. Sometimes I have a TOD that's a tie of the day. So I do have the Garcia tie, <laughs> which I'm wearing underneath the gown. This is from Maya Angelou. My mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. And to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. Today's the culmination of a dream. The next dream awaits you. I challenge you each to thrive. I challenge you to maintain your compassion. I challenge you to laugh and smile, to love and respect. Be yourself. You've heard us say, what got you here won't get you there. But the constant is you. Who are you? And show it. Thank you for the honor of being part of your first day as a medical student, along for many steps during the past four years, and now in your last few minutes of being a student. I'm so proud to call you colleagues and friends and family. Blessings. Thank you, Dr. Blackwelder. I'm Dr. Deidre Pierce, and I also want to well add my welcome to the family, friends, and the class of 2022, the actual 40th graduating class from the Quillen College of Medicine. The class of 22 represents a group of diverse individuals who distinguished themselves in a variety of academic settings and careers prior to medical school. Members of the class of 22 come from both privileged and disadvantaged backgrounds, are parents, spouses, and have experienced the loss of loved ones. The class includes former members of the U.S. Armed Forces, as well as those who are going to serve in the Armed Forces, college athletes, college professors, immigrants, and first-generation Americans. Together as a class, they have persevered to become physicians. Today, you, the members of the class of 22, share in the significant achievement of completing your medical degree. We share in your joy and your sense of accomplishment, and we wish each of you the very best as you move forward with your careers. At this time, we want to recognize those students who have been elected to various organizations. When I call your name, please stand so that you can be recognized but if we could hold applause to the end, that would be great. So members of the Alpha Omega Alpha Honor Medical Society. Members are limited to one sixth of the class, all of whom must be from the top 25% academically. While academic excellence is a criterion for membership, election to the Alpha Omega Alpha is not determined simply by academic standing. It also involves integrity, capacity for leadership, compassion, and fairness in dealing with one's colleagues. These are all equally important criteria in determining membership. Those recognized to be in this society in the class of 22 are Mallory Crowley, Fabronia Daywood, Anderson Estes, Angela Haxel, Morgan Jamison, Taylor Lipinski, Megan Massey, Jordan Newby, Ryan Serban, Nancy Claire Smith, Morgan Whitmire, Raymond Winstead, and Caitlin Wise. 
Congratulations on this achievement. Next, we recognize those students elected to membership in the Gold Humanism Honor Society. This achievement honors medical students, residents, and faculty for demonstrated excellence in clinical care, leadership, compassion, and dedication to service. Election to membership in the Gold Humanism Honor Society is a significant honor. The inductees have demonstrated exemplary attitude and behavior characteristic of the most humanistic physicians. Those within the class of 22 elected to this society include Gina Botsko, Natalie Ellis, Anderson Estes, Taylor Lipinski, Lindsay Merkel Moore, Jordan Newby, Caitlin Nicholson, Haley Porter, Rex Sue and Morgan Whitmire. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we recognize a student who has been selected for induction into East Tennessee State University's 1911 Society. Established in 2020, the 1911 Society honors the university's most distinguished graduates from undergraduate, graduate, and professional programs. ETSU has been educating, serving, and supporting the region since 1911, its founding. Students inducted into the 1911 Society have, a, have distinguished themselves among all graduates for academic excellence, service, and leadership. I'd like to ask this year's inductee to come to the stage, it's Abigail Lasek. College of Medicine is nationally known for its reputation in rural and primary care education. One reason for this is our rural primary care track. This elective program allows interested students to spend up to 25% of their educational time in one of two rural academic centers. At this time, we want to recognize those students who completed four years of participation in the rural primary care track. From Mountain City, Caleb Nicely. Haley Porter, Daniel Rayleigh, Rex Sue, Nancy Claire Smith, and Benjamin Welch. From Rogersville, Daniel Baidu, Fibronia Daywood, Rebecca Delgado, Bethany Faust, Angela Haxel, Abigail Lasek, Lindsay Merkel Moore, Colin Rose, and Maura Sedum. Thank you. We would now like to take this opportunity to recognize and honor those graduates who will continue to serve our country through the military during or after residency. Alexandra Elizabeth Abels, who will serve in the U.S. Air Force. And Colin James Rose, who will serve in the U.S. Army. We would also like to thank those who have served in our armed forces prior to coming to Quillen. Cody James Cox in the U.S. Navy. Joseph C. 
Kramer, D. Francesco, the U.S. Army. Aaron William Flaw in the U.S. Navy. Joseph William Miller, the U.S. Navy. Benjamin Lawrence Welch in the United States Marine Corps. Students in the Dual MD Master of Public Health program simultaneously pursue a master's degree from the ETSU College of Public Health in addition to their medical degree. The dual track is designed to train medical students to be effective physician scholars and public health leaders, enabling them to diagnose health problems and risk factors of not only individuals but communities. The following students will receive also in addition to their MD degree a master's in public health. Angela Haxel, Morgan Jamison, Haley Porter, Sarah Allen Ray, Austin Yoders. <laughs> Finally, I would like to recognize two students for their special contributions to the Quillen College of Medicine. These students worked diligently with the community uh, and the committee supporting student health and were founders uh, in organizing the learning communities at Quillen College of Medicine. So I would like to uh, recognize Taylor Harris and Haley Porter for their contributions. <laughs> Now, Dr. Beth Fox, the Vice Dean of Quillen College of Medicine, will present the awards. Thank you, Dr. Pierce. I'm so happy to be a part of this celebration today, and congratulations, Class of 2022. The first award, um, I would ask that as I met, call your name to please stand to be recognized. And if you can, turn to the audience so they can actually see your face and, and acknowledge you as well. But I will ask that you save the applause until the end of the awards have been presented. The Departmental Award. The Department of Internal Medicine Award is presented to an outstanding senior student who demonstrates strong clinical skills an inquisitive mind, a compassionate character, and has a desire to practice internal medicine. This year's recipient is Dr. Alora Ricker. <laughs> the Department of Pediatrics presents an award to the graduating student entering a primary care specialty who has demonstrated a keen interest in child health and development and who possesses an informed and disciplined mind, buttressed by kindness and sensitivity to cultural diversity and humility. This award is presented to Dr. Anderson Estes. <laughs> the Obstetrics Gynecology Department has established the Dillard M. Scholes Award to be presented to a student for academic excellence during the junior clerkship in obstetrics and gynecology. The recipient of this award is Dr. Abigail Lasek. The Department of Surgery has established an outstanding performance in the junior surgical clerkship award to be awarded to a graduating senior. This year's award recipient is Dr. Ryan Servant. Next, the Organizational Award. The Society for Academic Emergency Medicine is pleased to sponsor the Excellence in Emergency Medicine Award to be awarded to the student who has demonstrated excellence in the specialty of emergency medicine. The congratulations go to Dr. Caitlin Nicholson. The Tennessee Academy of Family Physicians also presents an award to the most outstanding senior student entering the specialty of family medicine. 
This year, the Tennessee Academy of Family Physicians Scholarship is awarded to Dr. Merkel Moore. Merck and Company honors two students who have exhibited academic excellence throughout their medical education. The recipients this year are Dr. Jordan Manuvi and Dr. Cody Winstead. <laughs> the American Medical Women's Association has established awards to honor the women medical students graduating as top scholars in their class. The Glasgow Rubin Achievement Citation honorees this year are Dr. Angela Haxel, Dr. Morgan Whitmire, and Dr. Caitlin Wise. <laughs> these, these young women are in the top 10% of this class. Yes. <laughs> Our Memorial Awards. The next award is made possible through a donation by the Corbin family to honor the memory of James Christopher Corbin, whose brother Michael Corbin was a 1995 graduate of the Quillen College of Medicine. The James Christopher Corbin Award in Psychiatry is presented to Dr. Benjamin Welch. Cowan Moss Family Medicine Award is presented by family and friends of Dr. H. Cowan Moss to an outstanding senior student who has the highest academic rank and is entering the field of family medicine. This award recipient is Dr. Jeanette Brindle. The Department of Surgery in conjunction with the Hinton family has established the Philip John Hinton MD Career in Surgery Award to recognize the student or students demonstrating the most promise for an outstanding surgical career. This year's award recognizes Dr. Taylor Harris. <laughs> the Ann Tranum Hawkins Award for Excellence in Women's Health was established in 1998 by Mr. W.E. Hawkins, Jr. to honor his wife, Mrs. Ann Tranum Hawkins. The senior class and faculty have selected the graduating student who has demonstrated the most significant involvement in areas of women's health over the course of his or her medical school career. Dr. Abigail Lathex is recognized for her achievements in this area. The next award was established by Dr. Samad Chaudhry in loving memory of Humaira B. Chaudhry, MD, born in Pakistan. She served as a surgical and cytopathologist at the James H. Quillen Veterans Affairs Medical Center, where she was involved with the education and training of residents and medical students who rotated through the department. This award is presented to a graduating medical student pursuing a pathology residency. This award recipient is Bethany Page Faust. The Cheryl L. McLemore, MD, Memorial Pediatrics Award was endowed to provide an annual award to an outstanding senior medical student who has been accepted into an accredited pediatric residency program. The endowment was established by Eric Emerson in memory of his wife, Dr. Cheryl Lee McLemore, a Quillen College of Medicine class of 1996 graduate who passed away in July of 2015. The recipient of this award is Dr. Taylor Lipinski. The Ronald S. McCord Rural Family Medicine Award was established in memory of one of our faculty, Dr. Ron McCord. This award is presented to the student who exemplifies commitment to rural medicine. The recipient of this year's award is Dr. Merkel Moore. An award has been established by the family of Dr. Clay Raster, who was a member of our faculty during, before his untimely death. The award goes to the student who, like Dr. Reister, may have started medical school later in life after having had a previous career and who has demonstrated commitment, sensitivity, and empathy to patients as well as dedication to the study of medicine. This award is presented to Dr. Rex Fu.
The Kevin Swaby Memorial Award was established by a previous graduate in memory of his young son. It is presented to the most outstanding graduating senior student entering the field of pediatrics selected by the Office of Financial Aid and the Department of Pediatrics. This year, the award recognizes Dr. Sarah Allen Ray. The Jay and Nina Mehta Family Award in Preventive Medicine is established to the graduating medical student who is planning a residency in internal medicine with a strong interest or achievement in pursuing a career in preventive medicine, epidemiology, or public health. This award is presented to Dr. Logan Bayo. <laughs> the Osler Award has been established by J. Kelly Smith. The recipient is determined by knowledge of clinical manifestations. This award is presented to Dr. Nellie Gregorian. The 2021 Leonard Toe Humanism in Medicine Award, sponsored by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, is presented to the student as judged by his or her peers, who consistently demonstrate compassion and empathy in the delivery of care to patients, illustrates professional behavior by example, demonstrates cultural sensitivity in working with patients, family members, and colleagues, adheres to professional and ethical standards pays attention and is sensitive to the patient's psychological well-being and displays concern for the general welfare of the community. I am pleased and proud to present the 2021 Humanism in Medicine Award to Dr. Anderson Estes. Anderson, will you please come to the stage? Anderson, Anderson will you please come to the stage? <laughs> Join me in one last time in recognizing all of these awardees. I now call upon Dr. Block to present the Dean's Distinguished Service Award. The Dean's Distinguished Service Award is presented to the overall outstanding senior student. Students were nominated for this award by the clinical departmental faculty and members of the graduating class. From the nominees, the Financial Aid and Scholarship Committee selected the student considered by all to demonstrate the qualities of an excellent physician. It is my pleasure to announce the recipient of this year's award is Dr. Morgan Whitmire. Congratulations, Dr. Whitmire. You're an outstanding choice to receive this award. Please come to the stage to receive your plaque. Again, congratulations to all. The graduating class wishes to honor faculty members they have identified as playing significant roles as educators, mentors, and role models over the past four years. Each faculty member being honored by the class will be presented with a scarlet sash to wear with their academic regalia. For the preclinical years, Mr. Rob Becker, Dr. Reed Blackwelder, Dr. James Denham, 
Dr. Michelle Dufour, Dr. Thomas Quasigro, Dr. Antonio Rusinol, and Dr. Robert Schoberg. <laughs> Faculty in the clinical years, Dr. Michael Blue, Dr. Debalina Das, Dr. Carlos Sasaza, Dr. Varun Kumar, Dr. Dimitrio Makaralia, Dr. Olga Sarkodi. <laughs> Congratulations to each of our outstanding faculty. At this time, class president Dr. Botsko will introduce the hooding ceremony and the faculty members who were selected to serve as the class hooders. Dr. Botsko. The Hooding Ceremony is a special recognition ceremony for doctoral degree candidates during which the faculty, class hooders, or immediate relative with a doctoral degree will place the doctoral hood over the head of the graduate, signifying his or her success in completing the graduate program. The color of the outer binding of the hood represents which degree was received, in our case, green for medicine, and the colors of the inner lining of the hood denote the institution awarding the degree, blue and gold for East Tennessee State University. The most prestigious faculty honor bestowed on the graduating, by the graduating class each year is the selection of two faculty members to serve as class hooders. These faculty members have been chosen as being the most instrumental to their medical education. This year, Dr. Blair Reese, Assistant Professor in Internal Medicine, and Dr. Brian Helsel, Clinical Assistant Professor in the Department of Surgery, have been chosen for this honor. Each will receive a hand-cast bronze sculpture entitled Hooder to display in their office during the next year. Dr. Reese and Dr. Helsel, thank you so much for your dedication to teaching and everything you've done for us students. Mr. President, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for their degree by successfully completing curricula offered through the Quillen College of Medicine of East Tennessee State University and are recommended to be awarded their degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. President Nolan, these candidates have completed all requirements for the Doctor of Medicine degree. On behalf of their faculty, I recommend you confer the degree. By the authority vested in me by the East Tennessee State University Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of your faculty, I now confer upon each of you Doctorate of Medicine degree to which you're entitled with all the rights, privileges, amenities, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. If you would please come forward as your name is called, I would be honored to present you with your diploma. I would like to ask those with personal hooders to please join your graduate as they make their way to the stage. As I announce your name, please come forward to receive your hood and diploma. Will the first row please rise?
Dr. Alexandra Elizabeth Abels. Dr. Daniel Augustus Baidu. Dr. Gina Marie Botsko. Dr. Botsko is being hooded by her father, Dr. Jim Botsko, a family medicine physician. Dr. Jeanette Carmela Brindle. Dr. Coleman Robert Churich. <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline Nicole Corso. Dr. Cody James Cox. Dr. Cox is being hooded by Dr. William Carter, a plastic surgeon. Dr. Mallory Renee Crowley. Dr. Crowley is being hooded by her father, Dr. Jiltz Crowley, an acute care surgeon. Dr. J. Keith Davis II.
Dr. Fabronia Magdi Daywood. Dr. Rebecca Maryfield Delgado. <laughs> Dr. Delgado is being hooded by her parents, Drs. Angela and David Maryfield, practicing family medicine physicians. Dr. Gregory Leonard DeRue. Dr. Logan James Deo. <laughs> Dr. Deo is being hooded by his brother, Dr. Aaron Deo, a psychiatry resident. Dr. Joseph Kramer DeFrancesco. <laughs> Dr. Natalie Ann Harris Ellis. Dr. Anderson Lee Estes. <laughs> Dr. Estes is being hooded by her father, Dr. Ronald Estes, a pulmonary critical care physician. Dr. Leah Marie Fassinger. <laughs> Leah is being hooded by family friends, Dr. Ann Cavanaugh McHugh, a practicing pediatric physician, and Dr. Michael McHugh, McHugh a practicing orthopedic physician. Dr. Bethany Page Faust. Dr. Aaron William Flaw.
Dr. Graylin Thomas Gawalik. Dr. Nellie Gregorian. Dr. Heather Christine Grubbs. Dr. Angela Ruth Haxel. Dr. Taylor Marie Harris. Dr. Fred Wayne Hicks, Jr. <laughs> Dr. Abigail Grace Holt. Dr. Benjamin William Hopkins. <laughs> Dr. Hopkins will be hooded by his wife, Dr. Leah Fassinger. Dr. Rebecca Amber Howard. Dr. Britton Scott Husky. <laughs> Dr. Husky is being hooded by his uncle, Dr. Tyler Williams, a family medicine physician.
Will the second row please stand and proceed? Dr. Mayuri Jagadish. Dr. Jagadish is being hooded by her grandmother, Dr. Salma Ramamahan, a family medicine physician. Dr. Morgan Breen Jamison. Dr. Jamison is being hooded by her fiance, Dr. Timothy Sahawi. -ni. Dr. Laura Michelle Kelly. <laughs> Dr. Kelly is being hooded by her father, Dr. Joseph Kelly, a practicing pediatric surgeon. Dr. Paul Wayne Kirby. Dr. Caleb Joel Nicely. Dr. Megan Massey Knoll. <laughs> Dr. Knoll is being hooded by her father, Dr. Robert Massey, an orthopedic physician. Dr. Taylor Renee Lipinski. <laughs> Dr. Abigail. 
Dalavon Lysex. Dr. Connor William Lovingood. Dr. J. Jun Mang. <laughs> Dr. Ali Chaslin Maxwell. Dr. Joseph William Miller. <laughs> Dr. Judith Lada Mintz. Dr. Lindsay Merkel Moore. <laughs> Dr. Jordan Bryce Newby. Dr. Isabella Nicole Neal Gomez. Dr. Naveed Shiraz Norden. <laughs> Dr. Haley Noel Porter. Dr. Daniel DeRay Rayleigh.
Dr. Sarah Allen Ray. Dr. Ray is being hooded by her sister, Dr. Caitlin Ray Barge, a practicing emergency medicine physician. Dr. Kristen Alora Ricker. Dr. Ricker is being hooded by her sister, Dr. Ansley Beth Ricker, a practicing surgeon. <laughs> Dr. Colin James Rose. Dr. Haley Alexis Scarborough. <laughs> Dr. Scarborough is being hooded by her father, Dr. Todd Scarborough, a, radio a radiation oncologist. Dr. Mora Shaheb Sidham. <laughs> Dr. Sidham is being hooded by her father, Dr. Shaheb Ibrahim, a pediatric physician. Dr. Ryan Philip Serban. <laughs> Dr. Serban will be hooded by his father, Dr. Philip Serban, a urologist. Dr. Rex Cam Lung Su. Dr. Nancy Claire Smith. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas James Salt. Dr. Solt will be hooded by his wife, Dr. Jackie Zimmerman, a practicing general surgeon. <laughs> Dr. Callie Brooke Watson.
Dr. Benjamin Lawrence Welch. Dr. Morgan Howard Whitmire. Dr. Jade Leona Willie. Dr. Willie is being hooded by her aunt, Dr. Lynn Manning, a family medicine physician. Dr. Raymond Cody Winstead. Dr. Caitlin Janae McCollum Wise. Dr. Austin Morgan Yoders. <laughs> Dr. Emma Caroline Zibus. Dr. Zibus is being hooded by her parents, Drs. Walter and Luann Zibus, internal medicine physicians. Congratulations to all of our graduates. I feel really honored that I got to call you doctor officially for the first time. <laughs> so now the students bestowed the highest honor, that of administering the Hippocratic Oath to their class on our next speaker, Dr. Jason Moore, professor and director of medical student education, the Department of Family Medicine, will lead us in the Hippocratic Oath. I'm honored to conduct the administration of the Hippocratic Oath, your first duty and responsibility as a physician. 
the Hippocratic Oath embodies philosophic principles and a code of conduct that have served as a guiding beacon for medical professionals in their conduct since approximately the 5th century BC. It's a long time. While the oath, its origins are origins, the meaning of some of its components have been the subject of debate. The swearing to Apollo is repeated only to remind us of its historical past. The oath itself does indeed remind us of the relevance in our modern world. The first part of the oath serves as a broad reminder of our commitment to our profession, and it reminds us of those things beyond ourselves. The second part reminds, uh, provides a reminder that our profession must remain solidly founded on ethical principles. It is fitting, therefore, for the class of 2022 to follow professional tradition and commit to our profession and the ethics of medical practice by repeating a variation of the original oath drafted in June 2005 by the Will Cornell Medical College. On behalf of the College of Medicine and the class of 2022, I invite and encourage all physicians in the audience to renew your professional pledge along with the students. Would all of you please stand as we administer the oath? The oath is printed on the last page of your program and is also displayed on the screen, or hopefully will be. Please repeat with me, doctors. I do solemnly spell to that which I value and hold most dear, that it will honor the profession of medicine, be just and generous to its members, and help sustain them in their service to humanity. That just as I have learned from those who preceded me, so will I instruct those who follow me in the science and art of medicine. That I will recognize the limits of my knowledge and pursue lifelong learning to better care for the sick and to prevent illness. That I will seek the counsel of others when they are more expert so as to fulfill my obligation to those who are entrusted to my care. That I will not withdraw from my patients in their time of need, that I will lead my life and practice my art with integrity and honor, using my power wisely, that whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of my patients that is not fit to be spoken, I will speak in confidence, that into whatever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick, that I will maintain this sacred trust, holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corrupting, from the tempting of others to vice, that above all else, I will serve the highest interest of my patients through the practice of my science and my art, that I will be an advocate for patients in need and strive for justice in the care of the sick. I now turn to my calling, promising to preserve its finest traditions with the reward of a long experience in the joy of healing. I make this vow freely and upon my honor. Congratulations to each of you. I now call on our provost, Dr. Kimberly McCorkle. Good afternoon, graduates. On behalf of the faculty at East Tennessee State University, it is my honor to bring congratulations and closing remarks to the graduates today. 40 years ago, the ETSU Quillen College of Medicine was graduating its first class of students. Those graduates entered residency training programs across the country, and those that they worked with recognized how well, well prepared the graduates of this new medical school in Northeast Tennessee were. A year later, another class followed in their footsteps, and that tradition continued year after year. These graduates continued to walk across stage on this campus and into the world where they made substantial positive impact on the communities they served. Today, another class of medical school graduates will leave our campus. And as doctors, you will carry forth the powerful and compelling mission that began in 1911 when ETSU was first founded, a mission to improve the quality of life of others. You will continue the strong legacy of the Quillen College, a school that was founded to improve access to healthcare to vulnerable and underserved populations. Your education and training at the Quillen College of Medicine 
which has been provided by dedicated and committed faculty, has prepared you well for your careers and has emphasized the importance of being compassionate and caring professionals. Each day may bring new challenges, but each day also promises to bring many rewards. I'm certain that nothing will match the joy and the fulfillment that you will receive as your patients experience hope and comfort through the care that you will provide. We admire each of you for making the decision and the commitment to serve others through the practice of medicine. Thank you for the sacrifices you made. Thank you for never giving up and for persevering over the last several years especially. You have shown dedication and determination and a commitment to excellence. And thank you for all that you will do as caring and compassionate physicians and the mark that you will make on the world as Quillen graduates. The faculty and staff at ETSU are all very proud of you. Take time to celebrate today. Enjoy the special moment. Thank you again. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. McCorkle. In closing, I want to thank the College of Medicine staff for their labor of love and the organization of today's ceremony. This is their Godspeed to our graduates. For those students honored with awards today, these will be available at the reception in Stanton Gerber Hall immediately following the ceremony. If you would like to see a list of all the award winners, you can scan the QR code on the screens. To all of our graduates, their families and friends, Congratulations, good luck, and go Bucks.